Let's start with Q implementation. We had a basic understanding with the syntax of Q, like how the Q is designed in JavaScript and how we perform the processes related to NQ and DQ. Now starting up, we will create a basic HTML file the way we did for arrays, for lists, for stacks. So the similar thing, we'll start with an HTML file. So this is my blank page and I'll save this as an HTML file inside Q and the name of the file will be Q, say Q demo dot HTML. Okay. Now I here I'll start with my doc type declaration. So I'll say first thing would be doc type HTML and inside that I will specify the HTML tag. So HTML, it will have the head tag and it will include the meta tag as the meta care set as UTF-8. Okay inside that i'll specify the title so my title here would be to specify the q demo so my title will be mentioned as q demo in javascript once i'm done with this part then i'll start with the body tag so i'll say body and inside body i'll call for my h2 tag which says this is the q implementation so you can say this is the first demonstration. So I'll say Q demonstration demonstration with JavaScript. After this, I'll enclose my script tag with the particular type and the SRC code. So my script tag will be enclosed here inside body tag. So this will be script type equal to text javascript and then i'll say src as q demo so this will be demo so i'll just say q demo dot js i close my script tag now i'll create this associative file so this q logic of implementation like we'll do a first thing is creating a q adding elements inside the q deleting the particular elements and printing that queue so that we'll get a better understanding so printing of the queue will be designed in such a way that it will print the string character so i will use two string char to understand printing of the queue example so let's create a new file so my name of the file should be the same name so i'll just copy paste it as it is in order to avoid any kind of the conflicts so i'll just save it inside queue and the name of the file will be in this format so i'll just start with creating a queue so it will start with initializing the queue so it will come as function queue and inside that i'll say the first thing would be to call for the queue so this would be this dot data store this dot data store and it would be the empty array and after that i'll call for nq so i'll call for the operation of nq so nq is nothing but inserting a value inside q so i'll say nq equal to nq so i'll call for nq parameter over here after this would be the dq parameter so i'll say this dot dq equal to dq so just check your names are specified the way it is needed so i call for nq and dq then comes the front parameter so that is the front end so i'll say this dot front equal to front after that comes the rare parameter or the back end so i'll say this dot back I'm specifying with back parameter, so this dot back equal to back. And then comes the two string parameter, which will say this dot two string equal to two string. So after completing these parameters, I have the final thing that is the empty parameter. So I'll say this dot empty equal to empty. So once I'm done with these parameters, I'll call for the respective functions. So my first function will be function 
n q which will say it will call for an element parameter inside it inside that i will say this dot data store dot push and it will push the element inside it so after pushing up the next parameter will be the next function that we will call is to dq so dq is nothing but removing an element from the queue so i'll say function dq element and inside that i'll say return return this dot data store so i will return the last element so we are like removing the element so it would be the first element so i'll return the position with respect to shift parameter so i'll say shift and after this comes the next is to get the axis of the front end and the back end of the queue so i'll say function front front will be the first to take the parameter it is the pointer pointing up to the queue and inside this i'll say return this dot data store and inside that i'll point for the first element after this comes the back end so i'll say function back inside back i'll call for return this dot data store and inside that i'll call for the last most parameter that is this dot data store dot length minus 1 so i'm done with these parameters after this comes the two string parameter so i'll just say function two string and inside two string i'll call for my two string parameter which will represent my particular data store in two string format so for that first of all i'll declare a variable say return string as ret string parameter as a blank variable after that i'll call for a for loop so for loop will return me the two string in the string format so it will call for a variable say var i equal to 0 and i'll initialize the value after initializing i'll say the length will be with respect to data store so i less than or equal to data store dot length and after that i'll increment my i so i'll say plus plus so after initializing the for loop i'll call for my return string which i declared right now and here i'll concatenate it with the data store element so that would be this dot data store and i character that is the index with respect to that particular element so once i'm done with this part so i have declared the two string parameter after this i will return this value so i'll say return ret string okay so i'm done with this part next comes is the empty function so i'll say function empty inside empty i'll call for if this dot data store dot length equals 0 then i'll call for return parameter which will say return true and if get the value in the reverse way then it will return it as false okay so this was my functions declarations after this comes my test program to analyze the queue implementation for that i will just say test program and then i'll say var q i'm declaring my q as a new q so this will be my new q and inside this i'll push my elements so pushing up the elements in stack but here it is with respect to queuing so i'll say nq so q dot nq and i'll call for the first parameter so my first parameter is a name say cynthia and after that i'll call for the next parameter which says and queuing with the next parameter and the name of the parameter is raymond after that it comes with the 
next parameter so i'm queuing up with three elements so the next value is parker so i'm queuing up with these three elements after this i will print my queue so i'll print it with respect to two string parameter so i'll say q dot two string and then i'll print the value so once it is done i will do a dq so dq is nothing but removing a particular element so i'll dq my queue remove the first element again i'll print this particular queue so i'll say again console dot it is the console part so it should be console dot log and inside that i will say q dot to string so i'm done with this part after this comes to print the front of the queue and the rear end of the queue so for that i'll print my front and rear in this particular manner console dot log front of queue and inside that i'll say q dot front okay and after this comes the back of the queue so q dot front will return me the front value and the back of the queue is nothing but the rear end so i'll just print as rear of queue or rear end of the queue of queue we are printing the way we want in front so here i'll print the back part so it will be concatenated with the back function okay so i'm done with this part so after analyzing the particular queue structure so my output will be the first output getting up the queue so this will be output 1 fetching fetching the queue value fetching the q value okay then after dequeuing it it again shows me the output 2 after that i will show the output with respect to front end and the rear end so here i should be output 3 and after this comes the output 4 okay so in this way i will generate my queue with respect to the order which i want to so i have designed the complete logic of the queue the next part we need to analyze is to print this queue in the browser and to verify whether i am getting the output the way i need it so let's go to our browser and check whether the output i am fetching like whether i am getting the queue as the systematic way i entered for cynthia raymond and parker and after dequeuing it the first element should be removed and the value should be 2 and the front end and the rear end would be raymond and parker so let's move to our browser and analyze whether i am getting the output the way i need it so this is my browser here i'll go to my queue part so this is a queue structure and here i'll call for my queue demo.html so this will be the queue demonstration with javascript but now we'll call for the console part so this is my console so i'll just click on the inspect element So once I get the console section, I can see the output which is desired. So this is the output with respect to three elements which we added in queue. The first was Cynthia, then comes Raymond. After that we had Parker. So once we remove the element, so removing of a queue takes place from the first position. So DQ removes this element that is Cynthia, and it returns the value with two parameters that is Raymond and Parker. so accordingly the front of the queue would be automatically raymond and the rear of the queue will be automatically parker now again moving on to our code if i try to enqueue or dequeue the particular element now i again dequeue my element and print the value so my value again for front and the rear would be the same element so i'll again print the front value i'll just copy paste it and the rear value so i'm dequeuing my particular element so let's check it out what should be the front end rear end of the queue so let's go to our browser again so here you will get after refreshing the value of front and rear is same from here we can analyze that queue has only one element because the front of the queue and the rear of the queue is of the same type so that's why once you remove again this particular element and again use the operation of dequeue in such a scenario it will return the exception or any kind of an error 
so in this way q manipulation and q implementation with respect to javascript takes place in the next chapter we'll analyze about the priority queues which is slightly different from the traditional concept of queues so let's move on to our next chapter